Hey everyone, long time to see, or at least it feels like it's been a long time. Anyways, I'm reviewing Breville's latest home espresso machine today. This is the Bambino and it's one of their smallest machines yet. It's also at a fairly affordable price range for something with these sort of features, so I thought we'd review it and see if it's actually worth it. Now, starting off, it's about 12 inches in length, 7 inches across, and about 12 inches in height, so it leaves a very small counter footprint. You also have a full water tank attached on the back that can hold 1.4 fluid liters, which is pretty impressive for something of this size. Now, the front is also pretty standard. You have your steam wand and your group head, and then on the very top, you have your controls, which is just four buttons. These correspond to your group head settings as well as hot water and steam for your steam wand. Okay, let's take the porter filter out and take a peek. As you can see, I'm using the double shot basket here. This machine does come with two different basket sizes, the single shot and the double, however I find that you won't ever really use the single. This yields a very small amount of coffee and it's very hard to dial an espresso with it, so I'm going to be using the double completely here. Keep in mind you can absolutely use the single with all of these steps, you'll just be using a smaller amount of coffee and yielding a smaller amount of espresso. Now in the front here you have this drip tray which is very easy to take apart and clean. It also has this little nifty feature here that will tell you when you need to empty it. So I'm going to put it back together, slot it back in very easily and show you how that works. Now pretend you have dumped coffee down here, you've spilled things, you've done all of that. And when it's nice and full, this little red knob will pop right on top and tell you when you empty it so you don't need to overflow it. Super nice. I find a lot of espresso machines have these, but they're always super nifty and appreciated because I would be constantly overflowing and spilling if I didn't have one of these. Okay, next thing we have is of course the steam wand. You have a guard here on top, which is great because these things get super, super hot. It also has a really nice range of motion. However, I'm going to talk about the size of the steam wand more in just a little bit. Also note that you only have control of the steam wand by this button on the front. Now on the back, it's very easy to fill up your water tank. Just pull off that lid, fill it up to the max marking and put the lid back on. Again, as I mentioned before, this holds 1.4 fluid liters, which is a very nice amount and will last you several days to a week if you're only making coffee, let's say once or twice a day. Now on the front, I do want to mention something here. Because this is such a small machine, the portafilter is mostly made out of hard plastic and it is kind of difficult to break the seal once it's in the group head. So I would recommend putting this somewhere where it has a little space to move around because if you're not stabilizing it on the top like I did before, you might kind of have a mess. Oh, also, by the way, before we get started, I want to mention that I just released a coffee. It's called The Duet. It's a blend of Guatemala and Ethiopian coffees. It's super delicious, and if you want to try it, head over to morganjinkscoffee.com to learn more. Okay, let's actually make some coffee. Now, since I'm using the double shot basket, I'm going to be dosing about 18 grams of finely ground coffee into my portafilter. However, this will depend on how you like your coffee to taste and what coffee you're using. So somewhere between 16 to 19 grams is best, but I'm doing 18. Now, this machine also came with this small plastic tamp. Very nice, fits perfectly into the portafilter, and we're going to be using that today. It's very light, so be careful to apply the proper amount of pressure so you don't end up with a channeling shot. Tamp it down, and then let's head back over to the machine and give it a run and see what sort of espresso we get out of this. Now, I do want to note one of the nicest features of this machine in this moment, and that is how quickly it heats up. Generally, with espresso machines, I found they can take anywhere from a minute to several minutes to reach optimal temperature. However, this will reach optimal brewing temperature in just three seconds. Those lights will flash, and once they're steady, you are all good to go. So if you're in a rush, if you're someone who's out the door very quickly, this is the machine for you. Now the Bambino comes with default settings. The double shot pulls out to 60 milliliters by default and the single shot to 30 milliliters. Now you can of course stay with these settings. They're perfectly fine and they'll work for any beginner, but if you're someone that wants to change them or do it manually, you're able to do that as well and we'll touch on that in a second. Now I use the default settings at first and you can see we pulled a beautiful shot that has a really, really thick crema on top, has a really, really nice body and incorporates together very well. This coffee is supposed to taste rich and comforting and chocolatey and it was exactly that. By the way, if you want to buy it, it's at morgandrinkscoffee.com. Anyways, let's talk about how you can brew coffee to your own settings. Repeat all the steps, get your portafilter in, and then hold down your dosing setting, in this case the double shot, for about three seconds. 
Your machine will then start brewing and it is now your job to stop it when you have reached your desired amount. I wanted to pull my shot a little bit shorter, so I just pressed it when I wanted it to stop. It stopped brewing and now it has saved that setting. So the next time you brew and just press the button, it will pull it out to that previously decided on amount. Pretty nifty, pretty easy. You can do this with a single shot as well. Okay, let's move on to the fun stuff, which for me is milk steaming and latte art. This is where I really start to judge home espresso machines because there is such a ridiculously wide variance in quality, both of steam wands and of overall milk quality that you can pull from espresso machines. So let's get started here. As I mentioned before, there is only one button to control when you turn your steam wand on and off. So essentially you have one setting and not too much variance of control over how much air you're letting in at a particular point. Two things I will note about this is because of how small the steam wand is, it is sometimes pretty difficult to be able to get the proper point of leverage to create either a whirlpool or to incorporate air. Another problem I want to mention, which is not at all unique to the Bambino, is that due to the amount of time it takes to incorporate the proper amount of heat into your milk, you will often find your milk sort of crusting and burning onto the side of your wand. This is not a huge issue, and again, this is super common in home espresso machines, but it is something we're going to have to address in a second. Don't worry, we're just going to kind of wipe it off, purge our steam wand as we always do, and we'll come back to it. It's not going to break or anything bad is going to happen by sitting to the side for just a second. So leave it there we'll deal with it in a second okay let's get to pouring i am as i always do transferring into a second pitcher because i think that provides a more uniform and overall better milk quality and start pouring now i was actually super surprised with the quality of milk i was able to achieve on this machine as i mentioned before it took quite a while to steam my milk and i also had a couple of points of difficulty in finding the right position for the steam wand to be at however as you can see this pour is beautiful and that is for the most part all due with the milk it was super buttery super creamy and super uniform in texture which is fantastic Based on this pour alone, I would argue that the steam wand is the best part of this machine. However, we do need to clean it up. You might have tried wiping it with a dry microfiber or even tried purging the steam wand and it didn't come off. Not to be worried, just run over to your sink, grab some hot or cold water, and then afterwards just kind of like scrub it down. This should take no more than 5 to 10 seconds at maximum. You just need kind of that extra liquid to get that milk off and you're all good to go again. Now let's take a peek at the back water tank. If you'll notice here, we've only used about one quarter of it and we've pulled at least three to four shots. We've also steamed an entire drink and you've still got quite a bit left. Okay, the last thing I wanted to show you is the hot water feature. You press this button on top and and Breville, I get that you were working with a small machine. You didn't have very many options, but I don't know if this was the best way to dispense hot water. <laughs> Anyways, use it if you want to. It exists. Uh, it's it's not my favorite feature, but I, I would say it's the funniest. And that is the Breville Bambino. All in all, this little machine packs quite the punch and I was super impressed by it. There are a couple flaws that I mentioned before, like how much it moves from side to side when pulling out the portafilter and how small the steam wand is, but those things are minor in comparison to the quality of espresso it pulls and the power of the steam wand. Now, my coffee, as I mentioned before, is for sale right now, morgandrinkscoffee.com. Feel free to check it out. Anyways, that's the last plug, I promise. <laughs> uh, this was really fun. I had a great time testing this out. And if you wanna check it out, I will link it in the description down below. Have a great week and I will see you next time.